As I told already, coloring the percept perceptron involves choosing the values for the weights W1 up to uh, Wn. We have two different rules. One is the perceptron rule. The second one is the tetral rule. So they are important because they provide the basis for learning networks of many units. Coming to the first type of rule, that is the perceptron rule. Weights are modified at each steps according to the perceptron training rule, which revises the weight Wi associated with input Xi according to the rule. The perceptron rule is given by using this formula Wi that is weight of i is equal to wi plus delta of wi where this delta of wi is given with the equation that is mu of t minus z zero or t minus o of into xi where this mu it is called as a learning rate which is a positive constant value this learning rate it is going to moderate the degree to which the weights are changed at each step and this t small t it is the target output for the current training example and o it is the output generated by the perceptron so the output that is generated by the perceptron so we have uh, different inputs so this is given to the activation function. Finally, we get the output here. The output, this is what the value that is the O represents the output generated by the perceptron. So this is the equation or the formula that we are going to use as a perceptron training rule to, to learn the weights of the perceptron. So coming to the algorithm of the perceptron training rule, it consists of the inputs x this represents the instances of the training examples and new it is a learning rate initialize w that is w i and initial small random values so initially you consider the weights w1 w2 and so on up to wn initialize these weights with the small random values repeat for each training instance x comma tx belongs to x so as i told x is nothing but the data set we have here. So the last column that we are going to consider it is the target attribute. So here for each training instance, okay, so this represents X for a single training instance. This represents TX. So for each training instance, X comma TX belongs to the complete training example. Compute the real output OX, which is equal to activation of summation of W comma X. This is the output obtained from the perceptron. So what is the output obtained from the perceptron? So we have inputs. Where each inputs, they are associated with the weights. So, so this is given to the summation. We get Z value. So it is sigma of I equals to 1 to N, WI into XI plus B. The, this is given to the activation function that is sigma. So we are going to get the output. So the output O of X for training example X, what this value is given to this activation function. So activation of summation of what WI into XI. So that is the output of this perceptron. If T of X is not equal to O of X, O of X is the output obtained from the perceptron. T of X is the target value of the training instance that we consider if t of x is not equal to o of x for each wi that is for each weight associated for each of the inputs perform this operation wi is equal to wi plus delta wi so this wi will be the new weight whatever we are going to consider here this is the old weight so wi is equal to wi plus delta of wi where this delta of wi is equal to mu of okay that is learning rate of tx minus 0 o of x into xi so finally end for this loop end if loop end for and this process is continuously repeated until all the training instances in x are correctly classified once all the training instances are correctly classified return what return the weights those are the weights that are learned from the perceptron
Let's take an example and we'll see how to use a perceptron training rule. Here we have two attributes given. One is weights in grams, length in centimeter. These are the instances of the training examples. There are four training examples that are given. This is the target attribute. So the first two instances, they are classified as C1. The second two instances, they are classified as class C2. So we have two classes. One is C1, the second one is C2. Now, if we just plot these instances on a graph. So this year I'm considering them. These are weights as X axis and these are length of the fruits. So if I just plot this data point that is 121, 121, 16.8. So this is how actually these uh, points are plotted and here these two instances belong to the class C1. These two instances belong to class C2. So uh, we'll assume that the initial values of since we have two inputs, I'll consider this as input X and this is input Y or input X, X2, X1, X2 or X or Y. We have two inputs X and Y. So since we have two inputs, uh, we need to associate weight for these two inputs. W1 is the weight associated for the input X. So W1 equals to minus 30. W2 is equal to 300 associated for the next input. The bias value we are going to consider is minus 1, 2, 3, 0. And the learning rate must be as small as possible. That is 0 0.01. What we are supposed to do is train the model using perceptron and classify the unknown instance with weight equals to 140 grams and length equals to 117.9 centimeter. So train the model using the perceptron. It is nothing but we need to perform the perceptron learning. Perceptron learning is all about what? Identifying these weights. So these weights, they are going to classify these instances correctly according to the target values that are associated with each of these instances. Finally, what we are supposed to do once we are able to learn the weights of the perceptron, we will be giving this as an input to the perceptron and the perceptron must be able to classify the new instance value that is given to the correct class either to C1 or C2. So we are into identifying what the weights or learning the weights and identify what this linear decision boundary. What is this boundary uh, that is going to classify these instances class one and these instances as class two. So initially what we'll do, we'll consider whichever the data points or the instances belonging to this group are, are classified as plus one and these instances points are classified as minus one. It is nothing but whenever the data points is classified as uh, plus one, we'll consider it has been classified to C1. When it is minus one, it is classified to the group that is C2. So we have four instances. We'll see how to perform this operation. Now consider the first instance, the first training example. The value is 121,16.8. The activation function or the threshold unit we'll consider is the signum function. So as I've already told, the signum function, it is uh, going to return plus one if x value is greater than or equal to zero, minus one if it is less than zero. So W1 and W2 initially we have assigned some value. So W1 value is minus 30. So you can see it is minus 30, 300. This is X1, this is X2. I have considered the first instance that is 121, 121.16.8. So W1 is minus 30 into 121 plus 300 into 16.8 minus 1230, which is equal to 180. When you just uh, evaluate this, you will get 180. This value is given to the activation function. So when this value is given to the activation function, it is going to compare whether it is greater than zero or less than zero. If it is less greater than zero, this signum function, it is going to return as what? Plus one. Since it is returning plus one, what we have assumed is whenever we have plus one, it is classified to which one now? That is the group C1. You can see here the first instance is classified as what C1 and when I consider this 121 comma 168 with these weights, even it is classifying correctly to the similar group as given in the training example for this particular instance. So hence there is no need to update the weights since it is classified correctly. Next you consider the second instance that is 114 comma 15.2. 
Fine. So W1 is minus 30. X1 is 114 plus W2 is 300. X2 is 15.2. Minus of the bias value is 1, 2, 3, 0. So when you evaluate this, you'll get minus 90. This minus 90 is less than 0. When this value is given to the activation function, this is less than 0. When it is less than 0, it is classified as minus 1. So there is a misclassification because the second instance is classified as what? Here, the target attribute is C1. It has to be classified to this group, but it is getting classified to minus 1 here. So it is misclassified so whenever there is a misclassification occurs what we are supposed to do we need to update the weights how to update the weights by using the perceptron training rule the perceptron training rule is given as what that is wi that is wi plus of delta wi where delta wi is equal to the learning rate t minus o into xi Fine. So WI, so here we have two weights. So we need to update both the weights. Fine. So whenever we are updating the both the weights here, we are taking the learning rate. The learning rate that is considered as 0.01. So T is what? The target output. The target output is given along with this instances. So C1 is nothing but plus 1. C2 is nothing but minus 1. So and O here is nothing but the obtained output from the perceptron what is the obtained output from the perceptron it is minus one now substitute these values in this and update the weight so for w1 equals to so this is the old weight w1 plus the learning rate into t minus of o into x1 w1 is minus 30 plus the learning rate is 0.01 the target output it is plus one but the obtained is what minus one into x1 value is what 114 so just do it. Then in the similar way, W2 equals to W2 plus again the learning rate T minus 0, T minus O into X2. Substitute the values in a similar way. Update the bias value. Once you just evaluate this, the new weight you will get is minus 27.72. Then W2 is 300.304 and um, bias value is minus 1229.08. Hence the updated weights are these weights. So these are the new weights that we need to consider. So once after this, we'll consider these new updated weights and consider the third instance. When you consider the third instance, the x1 value is 210, x2 value is 9.4. The weights and the bias value we need to consider is the updated weights. So use these weights, these inputs, then again uh, use this uh, formula so minus 27.72 into 210 plus 300.304 into 9.4 minus of the bias value when you evaluate this minus 4227.4224 is the answer we get then this is given to the activation function so the signal function since it is less than zero it is going to return minus one which is correctly classified so i am getting here minus one it is classified to c2 just check the given data set here the third instance is classified to c2 so we have assumed if we get minus one it is classified to c2 so it is classifying correctly so hence there is no need to update the weights now consider the fourth instance which is 195 comma 8.1 so again the weights we need to use the recent updated weights uh, substitute the values for these weights and the input and the bias value we get minus 4202.0176 which is less than zero ends minus one ends correctly classified fine now we have finished considering all the training instances and we have used these weights this completes with the epoch one so once after considering all the training instances we can see the weights are updated here so we have to use these updated weights and again repeat the same step iterate once again considering all the training examples and check whether for these updated weights the training instances are classifying correctly for these weights so what we are supposed to do use this updated weights consider the first instance again so 121 comma 16.8 because previously when we considered this instance the weights were different but it was classifying correctly since it, the weights are updated now okay for the updated weights we have to check whether all the instances are classifying correctly so take the updated weights take x1 and x2 that is the first instance value 121 comma 16.8 subdue the values 
will get 461.91, which is greater than 0. If it is greater than 0, it is considered as plus 1. So classified correctly to which class now? Class C1. Let's consider the second instance, 114,15.2. Again, substitute the value. So you will get 175.46, which is greater than 0. Hence, plus 1 classified correctly. The third instance and fourth instance have already been checked for the same um, weights and the bias value. Hence, these weights are classifying all the instances correctly um, to the classes that are provided according to the target attributes. Hence, the updated weights or the learned weights are what? W1 equals to minus 27.72, W2 equals to 300.304, B equals to minus 12229.08. Now, with this, we get the classification boundary. What is the classification boundary? We know W1 plus W2, W2 into X2 plus of bias. W1 is learned, that is minus 27.72 into X1 UK as it is. W2 is now 300.304 into X2 minus of the bias value. So this equation is initialized to with what that is zero now in the question they have given what consider the unknown instance an unknown instance that is 140 17.9 so this is the boundary that we have learned now using this okay consider x1 and x2 use this equation or the boundary and check to which class this instance is classified when you take x1 value as 140 x2 value as uh, of 17.9 you substitute the values that is minus 27.72 uh, into what is x1 it is 140 plus okay 300.304 into uh, that is 17.9 minus of bias value 1229.08 so we'll get it is 265 0.56 when this is given to the activation function since it is greater than zero this is classified as plus one it is nothing but this is classified to which class now this is classified to c1 the new instance 140 uh, uh, comma 17.9 belongs somewhere here which is classified to means it will class, classify to c1 now without um, using this um, perceptron learning if you just uh, with your understanding, if you just use 140, uh, 17.9, so 140 appears somewhere here, 17.9 comes here. The new instance has to be classified or the point it is represented at this one, which belongs to C1. So even after learning the weights, um, learning the weights and um, using this uh, boundary, if you are able to um, give this as an input to this um, train model it is classifying correctly exactly to which one c1 hence this is the learn model so here we are learning the weights so these are the weights that are learned from the perceptron so perceptron it is all about what learning the weights so that it classify the instances correctly either to zero or one or plus one or minus one